Hello, everybody. Um, this is Dominique with another Thrifty Witch segment. I thought that I would show everybody how to put an altar together using secondhand tools, things that you can find pretty much anywhere if you go into secondhand stores. First thing that I have here in front of me is actually a uh, bed and breakfast table, a uh, game table. Uh, I got this at a secondhand store for, I think it was Salvation Army, for $2. And the really neat thing about this table is that it's actually got legs that fold up. So you can pretty much drag it out whenever you need it. If you've got company coming over, you can grab everything and stash and store. So I got this. I pretty much use it whenever I take off out into the woods to go do stuff for rituals and things like that. So it's really, really easy to carry around. Um, second thing I got from a secondhand store was this altar cloth here. That was actually 75 cents. So I'm going to, everybody bear with me here because I'm actually got one hand. Let's see if I can't set up my altar here for everybody. Okay, that's set up. Now, your pentacle. It would not matter if your pentacle was made out of paper, if your pentacle is made out of wood. You could go into nature and find yourself tree branches or even grapevine. Grapevine is very easy to bend when you put it in hot water to make yourself a pentacle. The pentacle that I have here came from a, um, a hardware store. It's actually a stove tile that fits in behind the stove. It's a heat tile, I think it's what it was, to keep the heat and stuff off the back wall. And I wound up cutting out a template, cutting out a template with an X-Acto knife and a really, really heavy bristle board, and actually making a template and doing this for myself. Grand total of all this cost, it was $3. So there's my, there's my pentacle. Um, a bell, second hand, that was actually $0.75. Cents. That goes over in your air quarter. Uh, my wand, which came from nature. Again, like I said, you can scavenge pretty much anything from nature. So that goes over in the ear quarter. Your incense holder. I got this from a secondhand store for a dollar. So that goes over in the air. I'm only going to have one or two things here because the, the altar is so thin. Um, next thing I'm going to be using... Now, I got this. This is, uh, this is my athame. This is actually a letter opener that I got at a Copy Depot for $1.99. So, there's your athame. A ramekin full of salt that I got at a second-hand store for 50 cents. Well, actually, both of them were 50 cents for the pair. Chalice. Chalice is 75 cents. That goes over in your water quarter. And there's the other water bowl that I got was the set. And this besom, or besom, broom, the witch's broom, let's see if I can put it up here where you can see it, um, got that at the secondhand store for 50 cents. Apparently it was over in the Halloween section was somebody's Halloween, uh, part of their Halloween costume. Now the other thing, these are actually handmade candles that uh, I actually bored out and bored in about probably five or six inches down and put a candle cap in them. So that's actually nature. That was actually free. There's my male aspect and my female aspect. Now, there is a complete altar set up right there. Now, for those of you that are like, oh, where's, your, where's your cauldron? Use any type of heat resistant pot that you want to for a cauldron, a temporary cauldron until you can find something for yourself. Now, I'm going to show everybody a totally unique different way of doing this. So we're going to take all of these back out. And before I actually go into what I'm fixing to go into with you guys, there is a book 
If you do not have this book in your library, you need to have this book in your library. It is <coughs> Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. This is by far the best book that you need to have in your library. If you do not have this, you need to go out and get this. And I'm going to explain the reason why. For those of you that are having issues with finding tools, this book can help you utilize all of the herbs and spices and, and things that are around us every single day uh, with creating an altar for yourself. An example, this is a potato. And a potato is connected to the element of earth. So all these things that I'm fixing to put on the altar are all representations of elements. So there's my earth element. I have a banana. My banana is my water element. I have an onion. That is my fire element. I have a bag of almonds, which is the air element. So, and it's really, really neat because you can switch these up. It doesn't matter what they are. You can use this book and switch things up. If I wanted to, I could t put cotton here, or I could put um, things that represent earth, like apples and things like that. Now, with this, I, I can change this out and throw in a small little bowl of... Um, Chili peppers to represent the element of fire, or cinnamon. Anything that's a hot spice could actually go right here. Ginger, um, I'm blanking out at the moment. Other stuff, I can actually take the banana, replace the banana, and throw in catnip. You can buy catnip at Walmart. You can buy catnip anywhere that, where there's a pet store. This actually is a representation of the element of water. I, if I didn't want that, I could have a bowl of coffee beans. Coffee beans are connected to the gardenia family. Gardenia is um, the element of that uh, plant is actually water. You could have a small bowl of coffee beans sitting in your water element. So the, the choice is totally up to you what you want to use. Um, it's really, really fun, really awesome to create your own, your own way of creating an altar for yourself. It doesn't take much. A basic, simple, like I said, basic, simple, grassroots stuff. You want to stay connected to nature, stay connected to the elements that are connected to nature. You don't want to have a hell of a lot of bling on your altar because you want to show off and show people what you have. You need to be true to yourself and you need to be true to your religion because you are worshiping nature. You are a part of nature. Um, if anybody has any questions that they would love to ask me, I would be gladly to help out with that. And hopefully this little segment here has shown everybody what you can do to add personal touch to your altar and actually use everyday things that are connected to nature and connected, like connected to the foods we eat. And... I put all my stuff back up here on my altar. So, put that back, and I think I got my water bowls back. There's that one, and there's that one, and my, my nana. And the really, really neat thing about it is that after you're done with all the foods, you could bless them, you can enchant them, and use them for cooking in your food to do kitchen, kitchen craft, kitchen magic. Um, hopefully, everybody's enjoyed this little segment. I'm glad I could put this together for everybody. Um, thank you very much for watching, and I hope we'll be posting another one of these really soon. Lots of love. Blessed be. Take care. Bye.